So apparently the numbers are 35571591515. But I mean then she stopped it. So I'm guessing either that's the whole combination or the first <sighs> the first numbers are not gonna be used and it's just gonna be what started repeating one five nine seven we'll try both um all right all right let's try one five oh oh it's just but how i i know it could be for a different um for different books, but okay, let's try three, five, and then it says five again, five, seven, one. What did something happen? I don't think so. Let's try again. Three, five, seven, one. Mm. Mm, but, but I know it. <laughs> I know the order because I cheated. <laughs> mm. No, no, not this. Wait, what about the other? I keep clicking this. <sighs> the Great Goatsby, Aquamania, The Old Man and the Fish, Absolute Bull, Twin Peas. <laughs> now you're cooking with crabs? The Roaring, The Maiden Voyage of Kevin something something. Damn it. What am I doing? Um, no. <laughs> Stop clicking this. Did I look at this? Mm. Oh boy. I don't know how to pronounce this. Servosaurus? Novo... Novo... Yeah, I can't, I can't. Skull. <laughs> $13,000. An unusual and exceptionally rare addition to our catalogue. This fossilized... Fossilized... <laughs> skull is over a million years old. Oh boy. Million? Okay. The skull once hung in the bedchamber of the murderous Marquis of Mertien on Hallow's Eve. Um, I guess this is a date or a year. He brutally killed his wife, her lover, and her handmaiden. A fire ravaged the Chateau Brunard in the early mm, century. This skull was all that survived. Ha ha ha. Uh huh. Oh no. <laughs> Awarafo ceremonial mask. 64,666 dollars. <laughs> An outstanding spiritual relic and one of the few remaining artifacts of the. Uh, Awarafo, I'm so sorry, tribe. <laughs> I love the smiling. It's like two dudes flexing and smiling. <laughs> a rather haunting mask with a two-faced spirit creature at the top. <laughs> the coloring represents the ancestral realm and the enlightenment of communication with the dead. Legend tells of the mask being used in gruesome sacrificial rituals. 
Supposedly, the mask would grant the wearer great healing powers. And with enough simultaneous human sacrifices, it was thought to even grant eternal life. The creature at the top is most likely a forest spirit of benevolent nature. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <sighs> Mephistopheles Owl. Yay, I could pronounce this one. Ah, oh, 237,000. Ever watchful, beautifully mounted, and exquisitely preserved. This great horned owl, Bubo. <laughs> Bubo V. Um, any something. <laughs> Dates back to the. I'm too old for this. Hmm. <laughs> Rumored to contain a precious stone possessed by the spirit of Queen Annabeth II, it is believed to protect its owner from unwanted guests and spirits. Eyewitnesses claim to have heard the owl screech in the dead of the night. Did I say old before? No, I hope not. <laughs> um, there have even been reports of the owl taking flight. This wonderful specimen will certainly turn heads. <laughs> I love this game. Even though I'm too stupid to play it. Um, why are there pieces of this? Like, there's two pieces. In different locations. Did I look at this? Yes. Stop freaking me out. Um... Any other book? It's not like I'm postponing actually doing anything. <laughs> Killers, dozen, eleven monkeys. Hmm, not twelve, eleven. Okay. I'm gonna um, push all the books that have to do with. <gasps> what is this? Oh. <laughs> it didn't have to do with murder. Let's see, oh, this one is, yeah. Not, not push, pull. Um, tell me by the shore. What is this? High upon the jagged cliffs, where seabirds nest and cold winds howl, there is a boy. Every day he climbs to the peak and surveys the endless sea. Today will be the day he comes home to me. Far below is a cottage by the shore. A mother sets the table for three and sings an old song. Oh, my darling, sail home to me and tell me what wonders you have seen. That's sad. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I need to drink. As the sun sets and the sky turns red, Tommy starts his long descent home. He swings fearlessly from rock to rock. The sea smashes against the jagged coast below. Finally, his feet fall on the wet ground. He runs homeward, sand squelching between his toes. It's the same every day, except for this day. Tommy stops in his tracks. Something catches his eye. A thin crevice carved into the ancient cliff face, revealed by the receding tide. Mother always warned him, be careful, Tommy, or you may be clever, but the sea is more so, and full of dangerous secrets. Mm. But Tommy is an adventurer, like his father, <laughs> and those caves are for exploring. Leaning into the pitch black opening, he calls, hello? Silence. Tommy calls again. Hello? A pause. And then he hears a faint reply from somewhere deep in the cave. And so he slips through the narrow opening. Oh, Tommy. He continues to call to the voice in the cave as he moves further into the darkness. The cave echoes with dripping water and the whipping wind. Deeper he wades through the brine. 
until he no longer hears the wind or the sea, until all the light is gone, until his calls of hello meet with silence. Did he just hear his own echo? Please tell me that's <laughs> not the case. I think I have to find all the clues before I can use the um, uh, combination. <sighs> Until way back on the shore, the tide begins to roll in. Oh... This reminds me of this uh, actual case in the news about some kids, I think it was in China? High upon the jagged cliffs, where seabirds nest and cold winds howl, there is only the endless sea. Far below, in a cottage by the shore, a mother sets the table for two and sings an old song. Oh my darling, sail home to me. And tell me what wonders you have seen. Did she... Stop setting the table for three? <laughs> Ooh, that's dark. That is dark. Okay. Now these are like, yeah, the combination. So there are two combinations, right? Right? M maybe. Let me try. Um, oh no. Please tell me. Hmm. I see months. There's March, there's July, and there's New Year. I don't know if it, it's December or January. January. I'm guessing January. Uh, what is this? Augustus Caesar. Ah, September. Septic. <laughs> Halloween. That's October, November. December. <laughs> Deck Ember. Okay, let's see. Love in the time of murder. Valentine. Mm -hmm. Gotcha! This is really, really clever. I love it. Okay. So, but... Okay, let's try the 1597. Let's try that. So, this. Uh, we're looking for May. May? Oh. But I wrote it. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, gotcha. So we're back here. I don't know. Let's see 11 monkeys. Oh, never mind. <gasps> Wait. Is there something with 55? Or 57? Hmm. Let's see, one by one. I mean, that could count as 5-5. Five, five. So let's try 3... Wait, yeah, 3... 5-5... Um, five, five, 7? I think I tried it already, but... Nah. <sighs> I know, but... <laughs> Maybe I can open more books I couldn't read before. Oh no, this is... I read this, right? Right. The ship one. Oh boy. Do you want to say anything, Mr. Owl? Oh! One more. Okay. Ah, uh, 
finding Arthurton made fact legend. Crushing everyone to death, it took more than a month to dig out all the bodies. The tragedy shook the community. It also emphasized the need for regulation in the mining activities beneath Arthurton. What is that? Glatz? Glatz Mining Corp. Standard issue gear for new miners. I love the pistol. <laughs> what is this? Is this a shield or a mirror? Maybe they, they were... They didn't have electricity. <laughs> uh, above ground... Above ground, the rush had reached a saturation point. New fortune seekers were arriving daily, but the majority were unskilled. Many had never entered a mine in their lives. Oh, I don't like when it's so close. The vast network of underground tunnels they dug were unsafe and <laughs> devoid of treasure. Arterton was in danger of collapsing in on itself. Someone needed to step in and steer it to safety. That someone was Nathaniel P. Glatz. I love his name, Glatz. Nathaniel P. Glatz arrived in Arterton in the spring of... something? What he found was deadly unsafe conditions, sensing opportunity... Oh, that's another sentence. <laughs> sensing opportunity, he formed the Glatz Mining Corp. Glatz rebuilt large sections of existing... <laughs> oh, please learn to read. Existing tunnels introduced safe working procedures and created jobs above and below ground. He bought out other miners, hiring the best and driving those who wouldn't join out of town. Hmm. That's... Okay. Nathaniel Glatz's particular talent was in surveying. Surveying. Sur. Surveying. Surveying. No, it's surveying. <laughs> he quickly identified the best sites, and sure enough, he found the largest pocket of pearlescent quartz in Arthurton's history. Pretty soon, Glatz Mining Corp had proceeded. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I can easily read pearlescent quartz, but I can't read processed. <laughs> and sold enough quartz to hire nearly every miner in the region. Without their co coordinated efforts, Arterton would not be the thriving hub of technology and industry that it is today. <sighs> I swear I could read once upon a time. <laughs> this brings us to the story of Arterton settlers. Uh, Je Genevieve, I'm guessing, and oh, Palladius. I'm gonna say Teladius, it sounds cool. T. Pumberbitten. <laughs> I love their names so much. Teladius, sounds like Gladius, mm? was a guide for new miners, helping them navigate the treacherous darkness. One day, on his lunch break, Teladius wandered off to explore the mines. He squeezed through an opening between some boulders. He found himself on the on the edge of a massive, previously undiscovered cavern. What he found inside changed the course of Arthurton's history. It would also cost Teladius his life. Oh, come on, I want to know! That's not fa We didn't find a clue inside. Damn it. Mm. Well, that's clicking. It's like 11, 12. I get it. But I need clues. Ma hey. Why am I stuck here? Why am I not? Oh, I, I can't? I can't uh, close this. Uh, okay. We're stuck here. 
Um, I have no idea what to do anymore. I feel stupid. Maybe I should zoom in on some objects and it's gonna reveal um, something. 